In this lesson, we're going to take a look at uh, trigonometric ratios and what are called the special angles. And the special angles in the first quadrant are 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. 0 actually isn't listed here, but what all these angles are is if you take this arm that it starts with its uh, left end at the origin and the right end at 1, 0 and rotate about the origin, so it's really this point that's rotating. Of course, if I don't rotate at all, then the angle will be 0. If I rotate up to here, that's an angle that's supposed to represent an angle of 30 degrees, 45, 60 degrees and then the right angle up here to 90 which is the end of the first quadrant. Now the other angles on the diagram are all the angles that correspond to those angles if you reflect in the y-axis or reflect in the x-axis. So for example this is 120 degrees it corresponds to this point over here because they're reflections of each other in the y-axis. And if you reflect this point in the y-axis now this is 60 degrees so if we reflect that point in the y-axis, that would be another 60 degrees, actually, because this would be 60 here. 60 and 60 and 60 add to 180. So if that's 60 and that's another 60, then this would be 120 degrees altogether. Now, these points correspond because um, they are the same height because they've been reflected in the y-axis, so their y-coordinates are the same. Now what happens here then is that the x-coordinates, like this distance right here to the y-axis, would be the same as this distance here. So if that point is uh, 1 half, then the x-coordinate for this point would be negative 1 half. Now for a full development of why all the ordered pairs are what they are, uh, you can see the uh, grade 11 uh, lesson I've prepared on trigonometric ratios and special angles. We're just going to use this uh, uh, to refresh uh, how do you find the sine, cos, tan, etc. for all any of the special angles. Now for any point in the unit circle here, <clears throat> and all of this depends on uh, what the angle of rotation is, uh, if I rotate 30 degrees, um, the uh, X coordinate here is actually the cosine of 30 degrees and the Y coordinate is the sine of 30 degrees. So, uh, and it says right here, the point X, Y is equal to cos theta comma sine theta. So we're asked here to find what the cosine of 60 degrees is. Well, that would represent this point right here. So we're using this uh, uh, ordered pair. And the cosine is the X coordinate. So the cosine of that's 1 half. So the cosine of 60 degrees would be exactly 1 half. For the sine of 150, we would rotate all the way over to that point. And remember, the sine is the y-coordinate. So for that point, the y-coordinate is 1 half, so the sine of 150 degrees is also 1 half. To find the tan, you don't read tan directly from the unit circle, but you have to use the trigonometric identity that the tan of any angle is the sine of the angle divided by the cos of the angle. So we look at 120 degrees, and the sine of 120 degrees is root 3 over 2, so we put that in the numerator. And the cosine is negative a half, so we put that in the denominator. Now, in dividing these two um, rational expressions, we could take root 3 over 2 and multiply it by the reciprocal negative a half. A little simpler way to do that is to notice that the 2's in the denominator are the same, so you could just divide them out. And then the answer is uh, the root of 3 divided by negative 1, which of course is uh, negative root 3. So the uh, exact value for the tan of 120 degrees is negative root 3. Now what's in the bottom right hand corner here is a little table that you can use. If you ever have to memorize all these, you really only need to memorize the first quadrant because then you can duplicate it over into second, third, or fourth quadrant just by reflections. And in order to use this table to be able to duplicate it, I mean you can memorize the whole thing, but uh, you put in the left hand column here uh, the angle 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. And then I'll put sine in the middle one and cos in the right. And if you remember that the sine of 0 is 0, then you can duplicate this table. Okay? And all these values, and this is the pattern, uh, 0 is actually the root of 0 over 2. And the uh, 1 half actually goes up by 1 each time, root 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and the root of 4 over 2. So it just goes up root of 0, root of 1, root of 2, etc. Of course the root of 0 um, is 0, and 0 divided by 2 gives you this 0. The root of 1 is 1, so it's a half. Uh, this one doesn't simplify, so it's exactly root 2 over 2, and this one's same, root 3 over 2. Square root of 4, of course, is 
2. So we get 2 divided by 2, which gives us the 1 here. And the cosines are, uh, the, the pattern starts like this. It's uh, the root of 0 over 2 in the bottom here. And then the root of 1 over 2, etc., right up to this would be the root of 4 over 2, which gives you the 1. Okay, so they're just the same numbers in the opposite order. So that's a way you can uh, memorize that table. Flipping over to uh, example on the next page, uh, a few more, and these are in radians. The last uh, unit circle was in degrees. The, all these angles are in radians. And so, for example, uh, 30 degrees, same as pi over 6. So uh, pi over 6 is here. 45, same as pi over 4. Pi over 3 is the same equivalent rotation uh, to 60 degrees, and then pi over 2 and 90 are the same. To find the cosine of pi over 3, and again, still um, x coordinates the cos the angle, y coordinates sine the angle. So here's pi over 3. The cosine of pi over 3 would be the 1 half. For the sine of 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6 is this rotation here. Um, the, the angle is always be 4. So 2 pi over 3 is that point. Rotation 3 pi over 4 is that point. 5 pi over 6 is that point. So for the fi, uh, sine of 5 pi over 6, of course, we're looking for the uh, y coordinate because it's a sine, so it would equal 1 half. Those are the two equivalent uh, first questions to the previous page. Uh, the tan of 2 pi over 3, again, we would take the uh, sine of 2 pi over 3 and divide it by the cos of 2 pi over 3. And of course, the 2 is divided again, and we get negative root 3. Now, here's one that's a little bit different. The uh, secant of 5 pi over 3. To calculate the secant of 5 pi over 3, you have to remember that secant and cosine are reciprocals. And so this is the same as 1 over the cosine of 5 pi over 3, and we can read the cosine directly from the, uh, the unit circle. Now 5 pi over 3 is down here in the fourth quadrant, you actually rotate it all the way around to that point. And the cosine would be 1 half, because the x coordinates the, the cosine of the angle. So this would just be 1 over 1 half, of course, and 1 divided by half is 2. Um, if you're not sure why that works that way, remember that uh, 1, this is the same as the numerator, 1, multiplied by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 2 over 1. And 1 times 2 over 1, or 1 times 2, is 2, of course. So that value is 2. Flipping over to the uh, last page, uh, John's flying a kite on an 80 meter string and we're told that the kite string makes an angle of pi over 3 with the ground so there's the angle of pi over 3 there and then the wind blows uh, must blow from this side so the kite's blowing lower and uh, it changes so the angle is now pi over 6 and we're asked to uh, what is the change in vertical height of the two kites uh, h1 represents the initial vertical height h2 the uh, new height after the wind blows the kite lower and then we're asked to what's the change between h1 and h2 in other words how how much lower has it gone now we'll start with this uh, triangle over here with the h1 um, height and uh, in this triangle the h1 in reference to the pi over 3 angle is the opposite side and the 80 is the hypotenuse so opposite and hypotenuse, if you think back to your right angle trigonometry, that's sine. So we could write the sine of pi over 3 is h1, the opposite side, over the hypotenuse, the 80. And we want to solve for h1 here. So what I would do to solve for h1 is multiply both sides by 80. If I multiply both sides by 80, like that, the uh, 80s divide out and we have h1 isolated on the right so h1 would equal 80 sine pi over 3. So h1 is 80 sine pi over 3 so we look back to the unit circle uh, to find that the uh, sine of uh, pi over 3 is root 3 over 2 and so um, if we multiply these now the 2 would divide into the 80 giving us 40 root 3. So that's the exact value for the h1 height, the initial height. Now we'll do the same thing for the uh, uh, the right tri other right triangle. 
And so the sine of pi over 6 would be h2 over 80. And again, multiplying both sides by 80, we would get h2 is 80 times the sine of pi over 6. And if we look back to the unit circle and read the uh, sine of pi over 6 is exactly 1 half. So 80 times a half is 40. So those are the two heights. So we want the change in height. So we would subtract these to get the change in height. Delta is a, uh, the, the Greek letter delta stands for change in. So change in height is the 40 root 3 minus the 40. Uh, I, I write it in this order because uh, 40 root 3 is bigger than 40. And if you want to write a uh, factor of 40 out here, 40 times root 3 minus 1, just with the 40 factor, that's the exact distance. If you take your scientific calculator and evaluate that, you'll get uh, approximately 29.3 meters. So that's an approximate distance for the change in height. And that's the end of the lesson.